Okay, so the last time we learned magnetic fields go by the letter B. They're measured in Tesla. They point from north to south. We learned how to represent them in three dimensions. Left, right, up, down, toward you, and away from you. X-axis, Y-axis, Z-axis. We learned that if you put a charge in a magnetic field and the charge was at rest, it would not experience a force. We learned that the faster the charge was moving, the greater the force it would experience. We then learned how to figure out the direction of the force on the charge. With the positive charge, we used our right hand and we saw that this charge started to deflect upward. We also saw, very importantly, that if we continued to move our thumb to follow the direction of motion, that the direction of the force would change and this thing would follow a partial circular arc. If, however, we waited until the charge was inside the field to turn on the field, we could actually capture the particle and have it travel in a complete circular path and have it continue to travel in that path using the magnetic field as containment. We trap the particle in that magnetic field. And that's what we'd like to look at today. Realizing again that as the particle changes direction, the force changes direction, and the particle follows a partial circular arc. If it's in far enough, it's gonna follow a complete circular arc. All right, and that's one of the first uses of the magnetic force. We're gonna contain matter or antimatter using a magnetic field. So the idea again is to get the particle into some sort of vacuum area where there's no other particles for it to interact with, have it be moving, and then flick on a magnetic field of just the right strength. And by getting the magnetic field tuned perfectly, we can track this particle in a circular path so that we can hold it and experiment on it when we're ready to use it. Okay, so this is our idea right here. So the way this is going to work out is we've learned that the force magnetism is QVB. We learned that acceleration equals the force over the mass of the particle. And last year we learned that the acceleration in circular motion is V squared over R. So we'd like to combine all three of these things together to figure out what size circle our particle is going to travel in for a given magnetic field strength and a given velocity of the particle. We want to make sure that the circle size is appropriate for the size of the container that we're using. If it's not, we can adjust the strength of the magnetic field until things are tuned to just the right value for us to trap that particle. Okay, and what you want is something like this. So you can trap the particle until you're ready to study the particle. Again, QVB, acceleration equals force over mass, and finally, acceleration for circular motion that we learned last year, V squared over R. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is have a positron, so remember that's just a positive electron, so it's got the same mass and charge as an electron, it's just positive instead of negative. It's moving at a speed of 14 million meters per second, I'd like it to be contained in a circle of one meter in diameter. Don't forget to make it a radius. And I want you to figure out the B value that would allow us to accomplish that task. So try that on your own and see if you can find the B value to track that particle. So you're going to work the formulas backwards. You're going to find the acceleration. You're going to find the force you're going to find the strength of the magnetic field. Mass is the same as the electron. The value of the charge is the same as an electron. It's just positive instead of negative. 
The positive and negative don't factor into the math, so don't even worry about it. All right? Now, when we're dealing with a positron and we're trying to figure out does it go in a clockwise or counterclockwise circle, that's where you gotta make sure for the electron, left hand, positron, right hand. Okay, and that is our first use of the magnetic field.